you have a rising first grader and you're interested in seeing math curricula, stay tuned. Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, welcome. I'm Tanya, doctor lawyer turned homeschooling mom of three kids ages eight, five, and three. In this video, I'll be talking about some of the math resources we're going to be using for my five-year-old as she becomes a first grader. She's a Thanksgiving baby, so she will be five and six throughout this sort of senior kindergarten first grade year, but she's really quite good at math, so we're just gonna forge ahead with first grade math. For my first grader this year, our core curricula will be formed by Math Mammoth Grade Level 1. I had these printed by the Homeschool Printing Company. They did a great job. They give you these clear covers and a little um, opaque back cover that's plastic, and they just bind them really well. It was printed out really well. We are in the process of moving and unpacking, and I just didn't want to deal with printing and binding myself, but I will link them down below if you're interested in a nice, reliable homeschool printing service. Math Mammoth is a more typical type of math curricula. It goes straight through with um, addition concepts, subtraction between 0 and 10, connection between addition and subtraction, graphs, two-digit numbers, and place value from 0 to 100. And then the second book goes through addition and subtraction facts again, clock and calendar, shapes and measuring, adding and subtracting within 100, and counting coins. So it is a full and co complete curricula. It prints out in color if you'd like. And I just really like how it's a very orderly progression of math. If you stick to it for all seven levels, I very much doubt that you would be missing any particular concept. It incorporates word problems, um, horizontal math, uh, little kind of Sudoku kind of problems here. It also incorporates lots of additional resources if you have an interest in making math more fun. So you can go to these websites and find 10 frames game, subtraction pinball, etc. I really like how it incorporates lots of the same concepts as Singapore math when it discusses number theory and just mathematical concepts in general, because as you know, we've been using Singapore math with my son, and I very much like that approach to math. It's very similar in theory to that. I like that the pages don't overload the child with drill work, and it has a really pleasing appearance. To give you a look at the second level book, it goes through time and shapes. It's a very engaging workbook, and the cost is truly, truly remarkable for how good this curriculum is, in my opinion. When you buy the curriculum, there are opportunities to print additional worksheets should your child require additional practice, and you have access to that PDF automatically. Um, when I printed it out, I separated it out by the work text and the tests. The tests are simply one or two pages. They're just really tests for mastery. And then I had the printing company print all the answer keys separately for me so that I could just keep that on my teacher shelf. And the answer keys are nice and in a good size font so you don't have to hunt and peck for the answers for any given lesson. Everything's very well organized and I really look forward to using this. Curriculum. Because we had such good luck with Singapore math with my son, I will still be using the textbooks for Singapore math the U.S. edition for 1A and 1B when I introduce some of these concepts to my daughter. So we won't be doing the workbooks this time, but we will be doing the textbooks still. Everybody knows my enthusiasm for Critical Thinking Company's Mind Benders. I'm super excited to start using it with my daughter. I have the two books out here, the beginning book one, which is for pre-K and K, as well as K through two. I didn't have this last year, otherwise I would have done it with my child. But basically we're just going to work through and do the same type of problem solving logic puzzles that um, my son has in his higher level mind benders books. These are just really fun. The child has a couple clues and they decide how um, this side of the puzzle matches up with that side of the puzzle based on the clues. So it's logic, it's engaging, it's really simple and fast and I think it's a really good way of just engaging their brain. This is a different type of book. This is the warm-up, so you actually read out the problem. For example, Becky likes roast beef better than chicken. She likes chicken better than fish. What conclusion follows from this? So you kind of know in your head how to order things. Um, all of those things sort of engage the child's brain. Like, what do you learn from a from a declarative statement. Um, it also has just math problems. If Randy were five centimeters taller, his height would be 89 centimeters. How tall is he? So this is the type of book that we would definitely do after finishing the first one and after she feels a little bit more comfortable with mental math. 
So this is a fun little thing by Carson DeLosa. It's math thinking mats. We have file folder games by Carson DeLosa. I find that when I make my own on Pinterest or something, it just takes a lot of effort to laminate things, cut them out, get them all ready. These already come on cardstock pages. They have perforations, as you can see, so you can tear them out and store them separately if you want. Um, it comes with all the little pieces. You just have to cut them out, but then they're ready to go. So my daughter really loves this, and I think she will really enjoy this. She loved doing little file folder games for kindergarten. So I'm excited to incorporate this into our math curricula for next year. And it has 20 different maths. This is a book that I made copies out of for my son when he was in first grade. We never did more than I would say a third of the book because he didn't really love interactive notebooks that much. But I figure it's worth a shot with my daughter. Maybe she will like it a little bit more. She does like cutting and pasting more than he does. One thing that annoys me about this book is it really is best for either if you have one child and you're just going to use the book itself and just cut out or you are sort of trapped into making copies. And my least favorite thing about this book is that if you'll notice, the directions for this page are on the back of the preceding page. So if you did, for example, do this activity, the fact family's activity, and let your child just cut it straight out of the notebook, you would no longer have the directions for the doubles facts. Now often that's not really an issue, but sometimes it is because sometimes you're not really sure what they want you to do with that particular page, particularly when you get to higher levels of these interactive notebooks. If you don't know what they want you to put behind the flap, it's sort of, you know, confusing. But um, I just make copies out of these, and that way I'll be able to use it for my baby daughter as well when she gets to first grade. So again, these are by Carson DeLosa as well. Last but not least, we'll be continuing this Building Thinking Skills book by Critical Thinking Company. This is grades K through one. We did some pages last year, but then we kind of stopped. Uh, it just has, you know, math, logic puzzles. There's some sequencing. You can actually use wooden puzzle pieces with this or wooden shape pieces. Um, here you've got two characteristics that you're changing. So size and shape. Um, there's tracing that you can do. It's really quick and easy. You honestly don't have to write these down a lot. You can use these kind of as theory mats if you wanted. You can just talk to the child about where things would go. Venn diagrams, things. It's um, There is some tracing and handwriting. It's really about similar family members here. So like you have father and grandfather, how are they similar? Maybe they're both men, they're both um, related in a certain way. Uh, it talks about different relationships between different words. So here you have foods and you can practice writing it. Some of these pages we probably won't do, but I do like them. And if you do Montessori cards, for example, this has a lot of nice illustrations of different animals and things like that where you could do matching cards for example or three-part cards here etc so i'm always looking for different ways to use curricula if there's pages that don't relate to us as much and this does have quite a few um, identifying pictures etc so the second half of the book is really almost like a social studies kind of handwriting section. In terms of manipulatives for first grade, we will definitely be continuing to use the manipulatives I talked about in our end of the year review for kindergarten. So the abacus, um, a lot of the counters, etc. But this is one of the new ones that we'll be using. We've had this for a while and you can practice different operations with this. So like seven plus two equals. And it's just a fun manipulative. They roll really easily. I got this from the Target dollar spot one time and I really like it. I think it's so pretty and solid and wood and it's just one of those really nice things you can pick up there every now and then. Another manipulative that we'll be using are these math wrap-ups. My son will be using the multiplication and division ones but um, with my daughter we'll be using the addition and subtraction ones. So math wrap-ups are really fun. Basically if you've never used them before the child just you select which one you're going to practice. So let's say I'm going to practice um, maths subtraction facts from four. So I start off at the starting point and 10 minus four is six. Nine minus four would be five, so you find the five, and so on and so forth. When you're done, you turn it over, and as you can see, these little raised um, lines here show you what the answer should have been. So it's a self-correcting type of um, physical activity. It's a really good thing to use during read aloud times, or just times when you want them to be occupied, but listening. So they can still be thinking about what you're saying, but also doing this at the same time.
When you order the entire set, you do get the wrap-up CDs as well. So we play these in the car sometimes just to practice. So these are the main resources that we are planning on using for my first grader for next year. I would love to hear about what types of resources you guys are planning on using for math next year. Um, I like planning ahead. I like shopping for curricula. And just keep in mind that even if a curricula doesn't work out mid-year, you can save it for your children to follow or you can just try to tweak it in a way that works better for you. Either way, I wish you very good luck in your curriculum planning and I thank you for your time. I hope you have a wonderful day.